Hello everyone, welcome to Nesso Academy. In the previous lecture, we have understood static data members properly. Now in this lecture, we will understand static member functions. So without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. There is only one topic and the name of the topic is static member functions. Now let's understand static member functions properly. In order to understand static member functions and to understand what is their usefulness, let's take one simple example program. Here is the example program. IOStream header file is included and here is the class item. In this class, I have declared this static data member and it is declared as public. This means we can access this data member outside this class. Here I have defined this data member with value 10. And here is the definition of the main function. Within this function with the help of stdc out, I am trying to display the value of this specific variable. This is the static data member whose value I want to access here. And I am accessing this value with the help of the class name and the scope resolution operator. When we execute this program, we will get the output as 10. This is because the static data member has this value 10. Now here we can observe that public static data members can be accessed outside the class through the class name. This is the public static data member. We can access its value with the help of the class name and the scope resolution operator. That too, outside the class. This is possible with public static data members. But what if we make this private with the help of the private keyword like this? Now we have this private keyword over here. Because of this, now this is the private static data member. Now, this line will not work and we will get error from the compiler. Int item value is private. We would not be able to access the value of this static data member because now it is declared as private. We know that private members can only be accessible within the class. They are not accessible outside the class. Now here, if we want to get the value of this specific data member within the main function, then we need to define some member function inside this class that would be able to access this static data member and return the value to us. So now let's define the public member function that has the capability to return the value of this static data member. Here is the definition of the fun function, which is the public function. This is defined in this class, therefore this is the member function. It can access this static data member. Here I am directly accessing this member and I am returning the value of this member. Now here inside the main function, we need to create the object of this class in order to call this function. This is the member function, therefore we need the object of the class to call this function. So now we need to create the object of this class. Let's say the object of the class is i. And now with the help of i and the dot operator, we can easily call this function. Now when we execute this program, we will get the output as 10. I hope this is clear to you. We cannot directly access this static data member because it is private. But with the help of this function, we can access its value. That too inside the main function. We need to create the object of this class and through the object we would be able to call this function. Now, I am a little curious about this whether we would be able to define a member function that can be called without the need of creating the object of the class, just like a static data member. Is there a way to do this? Can we directly access the member function 
through the name of the class instead of calling it through the object of the class. Yes, this can be done by making the member function static and these member functions are called static member functions. We need to put the static keyword in front of the return type like this. Now we have this static member function defined inside this class. We can directly access this function without the need of creating the object of this class. We can access this function through the name of the class and the scope resolution operator. This is what I have mentioned here. Static member function does not need an object to call. We can directly call it through the class name. Now here we do not need this object and in place of i.fun we can specify item then the scope resolution operator and then the call to the function fun. Here we are directly calling this function without the need of creating the object of this class. This can be done because now we have the static member function. Static member functions can be called directly. Now when we execute this program, we will get the output as 10. I hope this is clear to you. So this is the concept of static member functions. Just like static data members, we can call static member functions through the class name. That is the benefit we are getting. So, we can say that static member function does not need an object to call. Also, it can access only static data members. It cannot access normal data members. This is what we need to remember. Apart from this, it can be called using either a class name or an object name. Although we can call the static member function through the object, but it is not advisable to do so. It is better to call the function through the class name. Now let's see the syntax to declare a static member function. This is the syntax we can follow. Within the class, this is how we can declare a static member function. We need to specify the keyword static, then the return type, then the name of the function after this parentheses and then the semicolon. In this way, we can just declare or create the prototype of the static member function inside the class. This is usually done when we want to define the function outside the class. And we can easily define the static member function outside the class with the help of scope resolution operator. This is how we can do this. Here is how we can define the static member function outside the class. We need to specify the return type first, then the name of the class, then scope resolution operator, and then the function. Within braces, we can provide the code of the function. I hope this is clear to you. So, this is how we can declare and define a static member function. Now, let's take the same example and let's modify it to understand how we can define a static member function outside the class. Here is the same example I took. Here you can observe the static member function is defined inside the class. But what if we want to define this function outside the class? First, we need to declare this function inside this class like this. We need to put the semicolon here. Now we can define this function outside the class like this with the help of the scope resolution operator. I have followed the same syntax. You can verify this on your own. Here you can observe the definition. We have just one statement, return value. When we call this function, it will return the value of the static data member, which is private and we would be able to get the value on the screen as well through stdc out. Here I am calling the fun function through the class name and the scope resolution operator. We will get the value of this static data member which is private and we will get the output as 10. 
I hope this is completely clear to you. So, through this example, it is clear that we can define static member functions outside the class. Now we know what is the concept of static member functions and what we can do with it. So, with this, we are done with the topic static member functions and we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.